Hello everybody, um, today is day six of um, our Conspiracy Grotesco read-along. Um, I want to thank everyone who came to the reading yesterday, that was really cool, I appreciate you. But um, now that I appreciate you, let's talk about how everything's fucking meaningless, right? Um, no, seriously. Uh, so today we're going over four sections um, mutation, undoing one, zombification, and undoing two. So, let me get my notes up here, because, yeah, I'm taking notes now, fuckers. Um, in mutation, um, the big, like, one of the things we start <clears throat> focusing on a lot is, um, the works of Zaffa, who was a Norwegian philosopher. And, um, let's see, um, why has mankind not long ago extinct during great epidemics of madness? Why do only a fairly minor number of individuals perish because they fail to endure the strain of living? Because cognition gives them more than they can carry. Most people learn to save themselves by artificially limiting the content of their consciousness. Um, so this is a pretty big point here. And this is where um, Ligotti starts turning everything into... Um, theatrical shit, like, um, using the analogy of puppets and stuff like that. So, um, right here, um, and in so living and not living, you take your place with the undead and the human puppet. Now this is going to start coming up a lot, and, um, not only in this book, but also in Teatro Grotesco as well. So, um, that's going to be fun. When we get to undoing, um, the, well, before we go there, um, one of the other analogies that Ligotti uses is life just becoming like a board game or something like that. And how I picture that game is like shoots and ladders. Um, or what did they call it over there? Ladders and snakes or something like that. Um, but it's the same principle. Like <clears throat> every turn you move a couple steps and, and you're when you're looking at the shoots and ladders board, it goes from like one to a hundred and every other block or space or whatever has some event and you do all these things some of the events are good some of the events are bad especially if you fall down a slide and um or a shoot and um that is very much what life is and Zaffa talks about um how all life is is a brotherhood of suffering and if you were to, this is me talking now with shoots and ladders and shit. They didn't say shoots and ladders, but that's how I see it. But if you were to take um, all of the highs in your life and lows in your life, this would be just like a fun experiment and take like a shoots and ladders board and like put it on the wall. And then, like, take, like, pictures of life events and put them on each square, like, to correspond with the shoots and the ladders. Um, I think you'd be really surprised at how accurate um, that is. Um, but that's just me going a little crazy here. But um, with um, undoing one, um, all creatures they their life cycle 
is made up of three things. Surviving, reproducing, and dying. And that's all they do. And um, for a long time, that's how humans were as well. Until the advent of consciousness. And as consciousness grew, um, I don't want to say so did our problems, but it's like, more money, more problems. And it's just like that. Um, but uh, we want to, like, we want more or think there is more to kind of put a Band-Aid over the fact that we know our time is limited, that we know we are in a constant state of entropy, that we are doomed to, to, to die, okay? Like, no other animal thinks that. No other animal goes, shit, I only got, like, maybe a good six years in me before I'm toast. We are the only creatures that do that. Um, let's see. Um, oh, and the main takeaway out of undoing one is that really the only way we can thwart our consciousness is to cease reproducing. Um, when we take that surviving, reproducing, dying, if we take the reproducing out, eventually this um, curse that has befallen mankind will cease to exist because we will cease to exist. And um, that might seem a little dark, but there's more. So when we get into zombification... Wait, did I have any other things? No. Oh, wait, well, well, well. <sighs> yeah, let's just go into zombification. So, in zombification, um, the way we kind of um, handle our biological predicament is um, to minimize this problem, we have to minimize our consciousness. And this goes back to Zaffa. And so there's four ways we do this. And these four ways um, are isolation, anchoring, distraction, and sublimation. And um, when you think about this, this is very true, how this works. So with isolation, we either isolate these thoughts and feelings like somewhere very far in the dark recesses of our mind and never think about them. Um, with anchoring, we go to either um, God, morality, natural law, family, or country. We um, put all of our emphasis and life force into those things to um, give our life some kind of meaning that doesn't exist. Um, with distraction, we fill our minds with trash. And it's funny because there is so much more distraction now than ever before. Um, when this was written, um, I don't even know if radios were in every household, you know, like, um, so this is like now, like we watch TV, we get on our phones, we might read a book, um, we probably won't. We could chill on Twitter, we could go on the gram, we could um, see how everyone we went to high school with is doing great compared to us on Facebook. You know, there's like a million things <clears throat> that you can do to make time tick by, make you get another second closer to your own demise by ignoring the fact that life is anything and you are just filling your mind with so much garbage that it's hard for your brain to sift through all the shit and what's actually going on. So, and then finally, with the um, sublimation, this is like the thinkers and the artists. So, like... Um, like Schopenhauer and Zaffa and um, Mainlander, which we'll talk about in a second, and um, all these other folks, um, Kant, Nietzsche, uh, Freud, all these people, like, that's them 
um, dealing with shit and artists like anyone from actors to directors to writers to um, poets to musicians um, a lot of people will um, make work based on the fact of our own consciousness and what to do about it or to just like give you tragic plays of other people who aren't you give you um just horrific tragedies for you to um watch realizing <clears throat> that yeah that too you um you're watching somebody else suffer and you understand suffering because that's all we're supposed to do is suffer, apparently. And so you understand that, you feel a kinship with that, but it takes you out of thinking of your own suffering because you're focusing on someone else's. And when you're focusing on someone else's, it doesn't hurt as much. Um, it becomes external, so you're not constantly internalizing it, unless you are one of these artistic types or thinker types to where when you see something like that you then immediately apply it to your own life and your own situation to see if there's anything you could learn from it and then you end up just depressed because you just watched a bunch of shit that's horrible and blah 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 you know the drill so um and then when we come into this this is when he first mentions pinocchio <laughs> Now, for those of you who didn't know this was coming, I am very sorry. But um, Pinocchio wants to be a real boy. He's a puppet. He wants to be a real boy. And he does all sorts of shit in order to become a real boy. And human humans are like this as well. Like, we are real boys but and girls. But because we are, like... mentally and purposefully pushing the conscious level consciousness level back to where like we're not thinking of the fucking big giant clock in the sky that's telling us when we're gonna kick the bucket we try to do other things and fill our lives with other things thus becoming just like a puppet um just a little wooden boy walking around you know <clears throat> um so this is pretty heavy, and this isn't, again, this isn't the last time we're going to be talking about this. Um, but did I have anything else um, from this section I wanted to... Oh, yeah. The lesson here is, um, let us love our limitations, for without them, nobody would be left to be somebody. Profound. Profound. Um, and then when we get into undoing two, like, what was the thing I'm going to, oh yeah, that's at the end. Okay. Um, so with this, uh, this is when we get in the, we get deep in the weeds here. Like we're, we're down in it. We're down in it now. Um, basically there are two ways, um, according to some philosophers of the 19th century, to um, fix this. And it's either sexual abstinence or sodomy. Um, and there were groups of people who were like really pushing abstinence or sodomy or buggery um, to really nail this in because... Reprodu like reproducing is the flaw in this world. Um, we end up having this life sickness where we know we're doomed and we're just counting down the clock. And yes, this is very depressing. I'm very sorry. But um, we need, according to this book, have a will to die um, as opposed to trying to constantly run from the fact that it's inevitable that we are going to. Um, 
And then this guy, uh, Mainlander, wrote this thesis. And the day his thesis was published, he committed suicide. Um, so that's pretty fucking heavy. But his thing was um, kind of a deicide. Um, not the Florida death metal band. Um, but his idea was that um, God, if there was a God, his existence um, was so miserable to him that the only way he knew he could stop his misery was to kill himself. And because he is since God wasn't a being like you or me, um, he had to just shatter himself. Um, and when he shattered himself in a big bang, um, he was spread throughout the darkness and, um, life came out of that. So God is dead. And without God's death, we would have no life was his, um, I don't know, his, like, soapbox he was preaching on. Um, he went further into saying life is hell, and the only way to not be in hell is to end one's life, or death being the exit from hell. <clears throat> so, um, the final bit here um, is that Existence has no redeeming qualities. If it did, um, cherished ideas, um, a peaceful afterlife, and uh, a progress toward perfection in this life would... Like, why would we do it? If existence had redeeming qualities, um, why it would... There be so many people striving for such things, striving for, oh, you know, it's really tough here, but once we get to heaven, a place that we can't visualize or have any concept of, once we get to heaven, everything's going to be okay, okay? Um, or uh, imagination, even. Like, the fact that so many creative people have these huge imaginations and take us to these fantastical worlds where we don't have to fucking deal with our own shit, you know, um, or just progress. Like just in the last like a hundred, 150 years, we have grown as a society, scientifically speaking so much and so quickly, um, that, it's it's terrifying if you would have um take someone from like 200 years ago and plopped them in 2021 in front of a computer with youtube they would fucking have a heart attack and drop fucking dead okay like but the whole idea is why would we need any of this stuff if existence itself wasn't flawed and life on earth wasn't hell so happy Sunday, everybody. Um, that's kind of what's going on in conspiracy against the human race today. And tomorrow, I think we're doing... Yeah, we are. The clown puppet. So in Teatro Grotesco, tomorrow we're going to be reading The Clown Puppet, which is a great, really fun story. <clears throat> so if you like clowns and you like puppets, you're going to love The Clown Puppet. So um, make sure you're there for that. And um, I guess that's it. If you guys have any questions about anything, let me know down below. Um, this is some amazing, fun stuff to go over. And um, again, the... Uh, not the menu, for fuck's sake. What is it called? Not the itinerary. But I guess the schedule of what we're reading when will be down below. So um, I will see you guys later. Thanks. If I could find the button to...